educators were. As an elder, as a 71-year-old gay man, I have to tell you that many, of, many people in the United States today think that we're all white, that we're all rich, and that we all have children. Some of us are. Some of us are white. Some of us have children. Some of us are in same-sex single marriage. But we are a very diverse community. And the representation of the elected officials that I saw today in Philadelphia is the kind of representation that I want you to see when you think of the LGBT community. From the beginning, we knew that our freedom, our liberation, was not alone, that it was all of us together, all minority, all oppressed people that had to recognize and see each other what we had in common. That's what this building means. Thank you, Philadelphia. These are my brothers, sisters, parents, and teachers. And I can't say no to them, sorry. I'm glad uh, uh, Mark didn't introduce me as he told me in an email or on the phone. He introduced me as the oldest living homosexual. Actually, <laughs> Actually, I was, I joined the movement at the age of 20 in 1958, and I did organize the first demo, and I was the first one to go on radio and get the FCC to say you can discuss homosexuality on the radio, and I made the first appearance on TV, Unmasked, and I did all my stuff way before Stonewall, and uh, I just want to say that it really is so, I did not believe in those, back in those days that we lived to see a day that where gay marriage was being you know, not only discussed but approved of by a majority of people that we would have made the progress because we were all criminals in every state except Illinois and like he said, you couldn't even, I had to go in with five other people to demand the right to have a drink in, in a gay bar. It was actually a mixed bar that didn't want to go gay. So when they got too many men in, they wouldn't let you know she had a woman with you. So we went and said, we're homosexuals, we demand the right to drink. And they said no, that was the basis for overthrowing the laws against uh, serving hom alcohol or homosexuals or allowing them to gather in your premises. The fact that today we're arguing at crossing the T's and dotting the I's on things like marriage equality speaks volumes. I'm so happy I also was in the civil rights cities and everything. I love the fact that here in Philadelphia that we really had a coming together because the biggest thing that made me so furious where the poor black people that were misled in 1964 and got worked up against gay marriage and went out and voted George Bush in for a second term, which nearly destroyed our country. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're almost at the shovel part, but, um, almost. This is where I get to do my personal thank yous. Um, and this is really important. Thank you for being my teachers. Thank you for being my partners, my friends, yelling at me, teaching me. You are my parents and brothers and sisters. Um, and this, you built the, the foundation for this. You really did. But there are people that currently are out here who I need to personally thank. And I'm going to take this personal privilege if you don't mind. Um, to my family, uh, I know I've not always been there at all the family occasions. Thank you for appreciating that. Thank you for understanding. Um, I'll try to make more. I promise. I'll come to Seder. I promise. Uh, <laughs> um, Eileen and Stacy, thank you. Um, my nephew Jeffrey is here somewhere. Jeffrey, where are you? Somewhere back here. Um, Jeffrey, uh, I help raise, um, and he's become a fine man. Uh, and for those of you who wake up one day like me and say, oh, gee, I think I'll be a parent, not easy. Um, that was a foolish thing I did, but uh, I am very thankful that you're in my life, Jeffrey. And uh, let me be Jewish for a minute. When am I going to have some grandchildren? <laughs> when you come to Seder. <laughs> Jeffrey, the... Uh, okay. Love you, Jeffrey. There's one person that I need to single out. Uh, for the last eight years, I have been the luckiest man in the world. 
uh, someone who said to me, yes, you could do this, but before I get, yes, you could do this. Um, gee, I came home one day, can I raise 20 million? Yeah, you could do it. Um, no matter how bad things got, no matter how difficult, he was always there with a, as a calming effect. Um, my partner, Jason Villamez. I love you. And last, but not least, there's a group of people here that make me proud every day, that allow me to go out and do the crazy things that I do, because they're keeping my baby up and running every single day. Please welcome my co-workers, the best team of people who create the best LGBT newspaper in America, PGN staff. And my sister Barbara Lickman's over there, somewhat like a sister, um, Dennis and Larry, and my host of friends who keep me grounded. Thank you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, Mark, where are you? We're going to get to the shoveling. Wow. <laughs> we invite everyone to move over to your right now. Sorry. Good to see you, Judy. Hold it here. Wow. On and off every seven minutes.